Well, hello there. Eric Griffith here with Griftastic Industries, and today we're going to look at the top seven new features that were recently released with EasyWrite 6.0 on your BenQ Interactive flat panel display. This new update, update 1.0.3.1, was released November 15th, 2022. This feature includes a ton of new features. I'm only going to highlight seven of which I really like. All right. So the very first feature has to do with our pen, and it's an additional paintbrush for our board. All right. So let's take a look at the board right now. What this does is if we go down to the very bottom right down here and we click on the brush, notice that we have an additional brush. How this works is as you write on it, the thickness of the line increases as you adjust the brush. Let's take a look and I'll show you in person, all right? So if I have my brush and I have this option selected, if I draw straight onto the board, my line is pretty thin. But as I adjust or tilt the brush, you can see that the stroke or width of the line gets fatter. So for those calligraphy fans out there, you just got a huge upgrade. It's now part of the BenQ board, all right? When you're looking at the board straight on, it looks a little pixely, but those in the cheap seats in the back, it looks just fine. So if you have a really fine calligraphy handwriting skill and you now can use that uh, on the board, congratulations. If not, it's a cool paintbrush, all right? Let's jump over to the next feature. And that second new feature is the addition of more shapes. Let's jump over to the board virtually and let me show you what that looks like, all right? I've got my mouse and keyboard plugged in, so it's not the same as me going and touching the board. But if I tap that icon right down there, and we'll zoom in just a little bit, I tap that icon there, you can see that I have the shapes uh, icon right there. And if I click on that, you can see that they've added a little bit more shapes, all right? The shapes are really easy to click on and insert. All you do is click the shape and then you can go ahead and insert it. So if I want to adjust the fill color of the shape, I can by clicking this option there and just clicking a new color. If I want to rotate it, I can click in this corner and rotate the arrow. So having the ability to insert a bunch of new shapes is an awesome new feature. And the next feature is one that our ESL folks have been asking for for a while now. It's the ability to use Google Translate on the board. So it's very easy. There's a new little icon right there. And when you tap the button, it translates it to the language you've selected. But before you do that, you have to set it up. So I'm going to take you to the board and show you how to set that up. What you want to do is click in the bottom right hand corner down here. Right hand for me, left hand for you. And if you click on the gear, you're gonna get this new menu. And we've got a couple of new options, but Google Translate Language Settings is one right in here that you wanna click on. As soon as you click this, it will have you download additional languages. So I've already downloaded Spanish, but if you wanna download an additional language, you just hit the plus right here, and it gives you 57 other languages to choose from. So you can translate from one to the other on the fly. So once I have downloaded my translate from and translate to languages, I can go ahead and write out a word. All right. All I have to do is click on this text box here and put some text in. I'm going to type the word cat. Okay. Just for examples. All right. Then I'll hit OK. So I have the word cat and we'll increase that size right there. And if I want to convert this to another language, let's say for my ESL students or something like that, all I have to do is push this icon right here. But my tip for you on using this solution is to double or duplicate the word first. So you click these three dots there, you'll click the copy button right there, and it produces a copy of the word. So then what you can say is this is the English word, this is the Spanish word. All I have to do is click this one button here, and then the cat becomes the gato just like that, all right? Very cool feature to use. I could see other teachers utilizing this in sets of instructions up on the board. So if they already have pre-typed instructions, it's no problem to click those instructions, make a copy of them, just as I did there, drag it to the other side of the board and translate it to again, uh, translate it again to 57 other languages, all right? So cool new feature that's definitely gonna help us out. And for our next option, we have to jump back over to the board in person because for some reason, when I click on this button virtually, it doesn't work. So let's jump back over to the board. So heading over to the board for this one to add additional templates, 
All we have to do is click that same icon we did to add shapes. And when I tap on my templates icon, remember you have the ability to add your custom one. That's not the new feature today. That's always been there. If you click on that, it'll open up the ability to get to your thumb drive, Google Drive, Dropbox, or OneDrive, or your network drive, wherever you store templates. But the additional templates they've added today are down here at the bottom. They have the ability to do time, which is an awesome uh, thing that we constantly teach in the lower grade levels. So you can add, combine this with the adding shapes down there to make our hands, to have them pick and choose the right times. You also have linear scales, right? And the ability to plot points. So very easy when we're teaching how to add, subtract, divide. Then you have X and Y, you have a small box grid and a large box grid. And for my wife, the chemistry teacher, we have the periodic table of elements, all right? Not interactive, but it's a good graphic just to have. And I really wish we would have known about this before we bought the super big poster that constantly falls off the wall in the classroom. But day late and a dollar short. Anywho, thanks to BenQ for adding both of those. Let's take a look at the next features that BenQ's added. On to the next two additional options to add multimedia to the board. The first is video and the second is sound. You can now have a built-in soundboard complete with buzzers, boos, and applause. So awesome new features there and that's what I'm gonna show you as well as the ability to play video. Quick tip on the video though, you'll want to be able to have those files stored somewhere on the board in order to get to them. So. If they're on a thumb drive, that's great. It's just plugged right into the front. You can click and select and insert them there. If they are in your Google Drive, OneDrive, Dropbox, or network attached storage, it will download that media to the board and then play it. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Let's go ahead and jump over to the board. So first to insert the board, or insert the media, what we're gonna do is click this option down here. You already had the ability to insert all this stuff, the link and the YouTube uh, option, but I'm gonna insert media. So we'll tap media and it takes me to my drive. Now, I see this menu where I have my Google Drive there because I am logged into the board. If you are not logged into the board, you won't see that option. So if you wanna know how to log into the board, I have a link to the video below that walks you through how to create a link or a BenQ account so that you can log into the board and you don't have to save all of your stuff on a thumb drive at the front, all right? So my stuff is kept right here in my Google Drive. I'm just gonna click here and I have sample sounds and sample videos, two different options. And you probably can't see that very well in the uh, camera, but I'm gonna click on sample videos first and then I have a list of videos here. All I have to do is click on this and then it takes this video here and I can move it around, all right? So this is great if I had a station or something like this in my room and my, my board was on wheels and I wanted the kids to come up and tap the button and then it's gonna play a video, all right? So the video has some interesting controls. You can take a picture or a screenshot of the video there. You can also adjust the time. Kind of tough to see the frog, but he is breathing very fast since I adjusted it to two times, all right? The video plays maximized every single time, but once you're done, all you have to do is tap the side of the screen and it goes back to the original size. So it's kind of nice. If you have a series of videos that you've created or inserted, you can go ahead and have that link to the board and then just play them as needed right then and there, all right? The second has to do with sound, and this is one that is just gonna really help out my ego when I am done teaching. Have you ever noticed that when you're done teaching, no one applauds? No kidding, I've noticed that too. Now BenQ has fixed this for us. All we have to do is click the button right down here and click the sound option right there. And then I will go back to my Google Drive right here and I've downloaded applause, which is one of the free sounds that I just searched for free sound effect applause. I can download this and I can insert it right there and it pops up as a little window. Currently, I can't turn it into a graphic or something like that that I push, but all I have to do is push the button and then I'm rewarded with applause. So at the end of your own videos and your own presentations that you put together with BenQ, feel free to add a little bit of applause. The other thing I like to add or will start adding inside of my Google Drive, if I click on sounds again and sound examples, is a gong because if this doesn't get their attention in the morning, I don't know what will.
There you go. <laughs> Start your day with a gong sound effect. Let's see what that'll do. All right. And the very last feature to top this list is the ability to draw shapes and have the BenQ board automatically reshape them for you. So it's called shape recognition. Let's go turn that on on the board. All right. So what we want to do is walk over to the board and just pick up the tool, the ability to draw, and I'm going to draw a square, right? Not the best square I've ever drawn, but all I have to do is tap the selection tool, draw a circle around it, or I can tap that. And then what I want to do is press this button right here that's next to the easy text recognition button. Okay. Once I click this, the very first time it's going to ask me to download an update uh, or a pack in order to make this work. All right. So I'm going to hit OK. It's going to download the drawing pack and then notice it automatically converted my shape to a square. Works with circles, triangles, any shape that's school appropriate and physically possible, it will do its best in order to automatically shape it for you. Again, here's a triangle. All I have to do is click on this shape and then click that button again, and it converts the triangle where I can adjust and make it any way I want. So circles, squares, octagons, whatever you got, this thing will convert, all right? That being said, let's head back over to my list. And if you found this video helpful today, please give me a thumbs up and possibly a subscription, and I hope that you have had a griftastic day. Thanks.